This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Okay, uh, Parsha's Kairach. Very well known Rashi at the beginning of the Parsha. Where Rashi know, not only gives us a Pshat, but Rashi gives the Pshat a compliment. Rashi says, Vayikach Kairach, Parsha Zu Yafenid Rashes B'medrash Rabbi Tanchuma. This Parsha is explained very beautifully in uh, the Medrash, Medrash Rabbi Tanchuma. And because the question is, Vayikach Kairach, what did Kairach take? He took. What did he take? It says, Vayikach Kairach. Right? What did he take? It doesn't say what he took. Yeah, you need an object to take. Says Rashi, in the name of the Medrash, Lakach is atzmoi letzad echad. He took himself to one side, liyais nechlak mitoy cho'eda, to be different than the rest of the congregation, lawyer ala kahuna, to protest the kahuna. Which is a tremendous insight. If somebody wants to start a fight, so long as they view themselves as part of the tzibor, they're not going to start up with the tzibor. The first part, the first step in order to make a fight is, you need to remove yourself. You're different than everyone else. Uh, once you're different, you could start up with them. So, Vayikach Kairach. Who did Kairach take? Number one, he took himself. Davar Acher, Vayikach Kairach, Mashach, Roshay, Sanhedrois, Shabahem Bidvarim. He took the heads of the Sanhedrin with words. What do you mean with words? You normally, when you take something, you have to physically take it. You can't take a head of a Sanhedrin, what, Kairach took them and he schlepped them? No, he persuaded them. Persuading someone is also a way of taking them. Right? I believe the Chassam Sofer says that, let's say, if you schlep someone, did you really take them to your side? In other words, let, let's say I'm having a fight with somebody. Let's say I'm having a fight with someone. I say, oh, I prove to you I'm right. And you start, you know, handcuffing people and, and pulling them to your side with a gun. Does that mean they agree with you? It doesn't mean they agree with you. So how do you take them? The only way you could take someone is take their das. How do you take someone's das? You persuade them. So in any event, whatever these two pshatim are, Rashi gives the pshat a compliment. He says, Par shazu yafen edreshes b'medrash rabbi tanchuma. And this is highly problematic. Because are you allowed to give a compliment to Torah? It's a medrash. Whether Rashi likes it, Rashi doesn't like it. Whether Rashi thinks it's beautiful, or he thinks he could do better, this is a medrash. What do you mean yafen edreshes? As opposed to what? As opposed to lo yafen. <laughs> As opposed to lo So you say, what kind of question is that? We're asking on Rash. It's a Gemara. The Gemara tells us in Erevin, like this. The Gemara in Erevin, Daf Samach Dalit. Look in the, over there. Gufa. Yeah, if you learned the Daf, this was uh, not so long ago. Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Shmuel, Afilu Schirai, even your employee of Afilu Likitai, or your farmhand, Noisin Eruvai, could give to the Erev Vidayu, and that's enough. Don't worry, we're not getting into Erevin now. Okay? That was the Halacha of Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel Amar Rav Nachman Kama Me'alya Ha Shmaita Ah, oh, how beautiful is that teaching? Beautiful teaching, that's a wonderful teaching Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Shmuel Rav Yehuda said the name of Shmuel another halacha Shasa Rav Yayin Someone who drank a quarter of a lug of wine Al Yoyra, you cannot paskin because your mind will be altered from drinking Amar Rav Nachman, even though I like the first statement, Loi Ma'al Yehoshmaita, I don't think that was a good shear. In other words, the first shear, 9.30 to 10.30, that was a good one. 10.30, 11.30, <laughs> Yehoshmaita. Says the Gemara, Dohana, you know why I don't think it was a good shear? Dohana, Kalkama Deloi Shasin or Viyasa, Dohana, Loi Tzila Daitoi. Because I know by myself that if I don't drink, I can't think straight. I need, I need, not, not me personally, but Rav Nachman is saying, Rav Nachman is saying personally, he feels that the more you drink, you know, you drink, it, it, cl- it clears the mind. So Rava said to Rav Nachman, Omer Le Rava, My time, Omer Marochi, how are you allowed to say, this is good, this is not good? But Ha'amar of Achabar Chanina, my dechsev, what does the Pasuk mean in Mishlei? Biroi azoinois ya abed hoin. Someone who befriends a prostitute will lose his money. Right? Pshutai kemashmai. Someone who's friendly with zoinois will lose his wealth. So obviously I need Shoma Amel to tell me that. That if you have a lot of chaveirois, 
who are zainas, it ain't going to be good for your bottom line. I need some of them. No, you know what it means? Listen to this drasha. Zainais could stand for Zunaya. This Gemara is nice. Kalaimer Shmua Zunaya Vizueno Naya. Someone who says, This Gemara is a nice Gemara. That Gemara, I had to break my head. That's not a nice Gemara. This Shir is a good Shir. That Shir, this Magad Shir, he's a good Magad. That Magad Shir. Anyone who comments like that, Ma'abed Hoyna Shaltar will lose all his Torah. Amar Lei, Rav Nachman said, You're right. Hadribi, I won't say that again. So what do we see from here? You're not allowed to comment. This is a nice teaching. This is not a nice teaching. And you open up this week's parsha, and in the very first Rashi, Rashi seems to be violating the admonition of the Gemara. He says, Parsha zu yafen et rashas bemedrish revitan chuma. That this parsha is explained beautifully in the medrash. So you say, is that, a, is that a legitimate question? Is that a valid question? Rabbi, you know who asked this question? The Taz. The Taz, in his commentary, Divrei David, on Rashi. He asks, Rashi seems to be violating the Gemara in Erevin. L'chayra kasha, says the Taz. And the Divrei David, Sheyesh Isser Belashem Zeh. There's an Isser if you use this terminology. Shariyam or Chazal, Sha'aser Loimar Halacha Zuna, Halacha Zuenona. So Taz says the Taz, no, you're reading the Gemara incorrectly. The Gemara never said you can't say this is a nice Gemara. You, this is a nice shear. This is a good Rebbe. The Gemara said you can't say this is a good shear and that's a bad shear. But maybe you could say this is a good shear. Right? In other words, Taz saying maybe Rashi never said this Medrash is a good one as opposed to the one on Shlach. Forget it. Rashi didn't say that. Rashi says this is a good Medrash. Says the Taz, no. Don't say the dafka tarvayo yesh esoloima. Don't say it's only you can't say this one's good but this one is bad. Zainoi. Because could you say this is a bad shear? No. So the same way you can't say this is a bad shear by itself, you can't say this is a good shear by itself. Zainoi. The halacha zu eino no el chud yesh This halacha, to say just this halacha is no good, you can't say it. El al karchach the hachi kamar. What the Gemara must mean is like this. Keshem sha'asar loimar halacha zu eino noah. What the Gemara means to say is the same way you're not allowed to say this halacha is no good. Kach asar loimar halacha zu noah. You can't say, I'm still in the Taz. This halacha is nice. Why? Why? What would be wrong if I said, you know, I went to a show this morning and from 9.30 to 10.30 is really a very interesting topic. Yeah, the 9.30 to 10.30 slot. What do you think would be... Yeah, but uh, obviously 10.30, 11.30 wasn't <laughs> mere, nearly as interesting as 9.30, right? Dimitoich is that, because if you're going to comment that a shir was good, a gemara was good, mashma shahalachas achaz enam noem, chas v'sham. That's mashma, that other halachas are not good. Then came lama ama rashi parsha zu, how is rashi allowed to say, this is a good, a good drasha. Rabbi, if I were to ask you, according to the Taz, are you, only, are you allowed to say, this is a nice Gemara? Or are you only not allowed to say, this one's nice, but that one's not nice? The Taz is saying very clearly, not only can you say, this, this Sugya wasn't, wasn't nice, not only can't you say that, you can't even say, oh, this was a Geshmaka Sugya. This was a nice Sugya. Why can't you say because, that? Because that implies that ye- wasn't. yesterday's wasn't. I was more awake? No. Oh, you As a Talmud sitting there. So say, you know, today, last night I slept eight hours and I had extra caffeine in my coffee. That's <laughs> well, why are you commenting on the shear? <laughs> if somebody, you know, every day he comes out of the shear like that and, and say, that was, you know, today was really gushmak. So as if to say, in earlier shurim, other gemars are not. So the Taz comes out, Halacha Lamaisa, you may not compliment anything in Torah. So what's Pshan and Rashi? Listen to this Pshan Rashi. Yesh Loimar, Degam Kan Yesh Miot. Yes, Rashi is giving a compliment, which from that we should infer that there is not a criticism, but something not as good. Why? Listen to this. De Bashar Mekaimais Yesh Beis Drachim. Because everywhere else in Chumash, there are two ways of learning. There's always a simple interpretation, and there's a Midrashic interpretation. 
But on this Rashi, there's only one way to learn. On this Pasuk, there's only one way to learn. The Medrash of Karach took himself, or Karach took the Sanhedrin. The Medrash becomes the Pshat. There is no Pshat over here. Rak Hamedrash who Yaf and Nidrash, the Medrash is beautiful. Afilu lifi pshutai, the ain shum perush al vayikach kairach. Listen to what the Taz is saying. In every pasuk and chumash, you have what's called the foundation. You have the pshat. Built on the pshat is the drush. But what happens if there is no pshat? What if there is no simple interpretation? You say, when does that ever occur? I'm not familiar with anywhere in the whole Chumash, there's no Pshat. Says Rashi, let me tell you something. In this instance, in this case, there is no Pshat in what Kairach took. So then, level two becomes either upgraded or we call it downgraded. The Drash becomes a Pshat. So is this Drash, of course it's beautiful, but is it beautiful as Pshat? So Rashi says, in this instance, where there's no Pshat, the drash is a beautiful pshat. That's what Rashi means to say. When Rashi says, Yafen and Rash, as Rashi's point is, it's so beautiful because there's no pshat over here. Right? You have often, Rashi will say a pshat, and then the Ramban will ask five questions, and the Ramban will, you know, dismiss Rashi. I'll ask you a question. How could the Ramban dismiss Rashi? Rashi's not making up a pshat, he's quoting a medrash. So the Ramban can ask five million questions. What Rashi said was given me Sinai. It's a medrash. Who's the Ramban to reject what Rashi is saying? Well, it's Rashi's interpretation. But it's not. Often the Ramban will reject Rashi's... Rashi's interpretation is almost always a medrash. The answer is because Rashi gave us a very important principle in Paragimel of Horatius. Va'ani lepshutai shal mikra basi. I'm coming to tell you Pashib Shat. There are hundreds of Midrashim on the Pesukim. If Rashi brings down a Medrash, Rashi is saying this is the most simple interpretation of the Pesukim. So Ramban's questions are not, you're wrong. The Ramban's questions are, that's not Pshat. I have a different explanation which we'll call Pshat. There's something which is called the simple interpretation. Rashi and the Ramban disagree. What is the simple interpretation? So in this case, says Ataz, when Rashi says, Parashazu Yafen Nidrashas, Rashi is not saying as opposed to Parashashlach, as opposed to Parashashchukas, Rashi is pointing out that in this case where there is no Pshat, the Medrash becomes a Pshat. So Rabbi said, according to the Taz, are you allowed to walk out of a shear and say, that was a good shear? No. Can't do that. You might say very often you go up to the rug after a shear and say, you should go up. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you know if you could do it or not. <laughs> Why can't you say some shear are better than others? <laughs> you do it after. Both are okay, let's not do that show. Let's do that Gamaras. So sometimes Daf Yomi is more interesting than other Daf. Even more interesting. You're the, you're the, the <laughs> final <laughs> arbiter and the decider about the, the value of the Daf, the importance, the interest of the Daf. If you're not interested, that's your problem. Daf is what it is. It could be that you're talking about yourself. I enjoyed this year. There's no problem. It's, it's, if you say that this Gemara... Okay, now Rashi didn't say, Rashi didn't say, you know, sitting here, you know, in Ashkenaz, I really, that, in Sarfas, right... I really got a gushma. Rashi says, this is beautiful. As it, what? So Gemara says, you can't say that, because as opposed to what? As opposed to... saying that, that, that this is, is beautiful versus I enjoyed the shear is, is a different problem about the okay. reaction to learn. Okay, okay. That's, that's true. But what about people who come say, that was a beautiful Gemara? Wow, what a beautiful Gemara. What a gushma <laughs> Gemara. But Dabr HaMalch says, Pekude HaSharam Masam Masam Chilev. They're all Masam Chilev. And you decided that because you, you decided to drink coffee this morning, that this is a good Gemara. <laughs> right? You're awake. You're awake. You're awake. Yeah. <laughs> Who are you to, to compliment implies that other things are not as complimentary. Let's see what the Marsha says. Right? Again, this is, there may be another way to learn this Gemara. Maybe all the Gemara means is you can say this Gemara is nice and that Gemara is not nice. But maybe to say this Gemara is nice, maybe that you could say. Says the Marsha, look at number four. Mashma dezu noe nami lo yamru. This Gemara implies, not only could you not say this is nice, that's not nice, you can't even say this one was nice. 
The Bahaki Ayri Kra, the I see Raya Zainais. The word Zainais stands for Zu Nae, not Zu Nae, the Zu Lonae. The word Zona stands for Zu Nae. That implies that what Soma Amalek is teaching me is the Raya Zono Si Abidhon, that if you say this is nice, you're going to lose your Torah. Now it says in Marsha, how do we have a right to dash in the word Zaina, Zu Nae? So Marsha says very simple. Because the word zonos throughout Tanakh is never spelled mole. It's always spelled zayin, vav, nun, fa, saf. But in this Pasuk and Mishle, it's zayin, vav, nun, vav, saf. So we have an extra vav to darshan. Velo. Velo Excuse me. Normally zonos is spelled without the first vav. And here it's spelled with the first vav to teach Zu. The extra vav in the beginning of the word teaches me zu, naya. Marsha concludes, not only are you now to say, this was a good Gemara, that wasn't a good Gemara, you cannot even say, this is a nice Gemara. But Does everybody agree with the Taz and the Marsha? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Says the Rashash, the Rashash points out, that if you look in the Gemara in Shavuos, on the Memheyamid base, Look at number six. Amar Rami Barchama Kama Me'alya Ha Shmaitza. Rami Barchama said, Look how beautiful this Gemara is. And this is just one illustration of many of Amoraim who commented, Kama Me'alya Ha Shmaitza. How beautiful is this Sugya? Says Rashash, look at number five. The Marsha says, Dezuno Elevad Gamkin Lo Yomer. The Marsha says, not only you know how to say this is not nice, you can't even say this is nice. Says Rasha, Shvinei Matsanu, the Amoroi Tuva, we find many Amoram, the Amri, who say, Kama Ma'al Yahash Maitza, how beautiful is this teaching? For example, in Shuas Menheim at Beis. So the Rashash argues on the Marsha. The Ta says, you can't say, nice Gemara, nice Shir, nice Drasha. The Marsha says, you can't say, nice Gemara. The Rashash brings a from Shus, you could say that. And adds the Rashash, even according to the Marsha, this whole thing is talking about whether you're just commenting. But what if the rabbi said something, or the Gemara says something, and it's not, it's wrong? What if you hear something and it's wrong? So then what should you do? So in that case, we find in many Gemaras, like the Gemara Tainus, the Gemara says, Ha! Huh, Right, the Gemara says, "Hadar Reb Chista k'choy mes l'shinayim u'cha'afrar lo'inayim." That the Gemara we find throughout Shas that if an Amora made a statement which wasn't correct, they heavily criticized it. They said it's like uh, smoke; it's like smoke to the eyes. Ka'ashon le'inayim k'choy mes l'shinayim. So this whole Gemara is talking that if you're just commenting, but if you're arguing, you're allowed to argue in the strongest of terms. But back to our subject: Are you allowed to compliment? Are you allowed to give, you know, an accolade to a Gemara, or a teaching, or a, a shir? So what would you say? It's not like us. The Taz says no. The Masha says no. The Rashash says yes. Says the Ravadi Yosef, I'm going to bring you a Raya that you can. First of all, what would be a good Raya that you can? Rashi in the beginning of Karach. Rashi says, <laughs> Parsha Zu, Yafen and Rashas. It's a beautiful Joshua. Rashi didn't say, Parsha Zu, Yafen and Rashas. But look back at Noyach, it's Gefelach, right? Rashi didn't say that. Rashi said, Parsha Zu, Yafen and Rashas. So Rashi seems to be siding with the Rashash. Uh, the Rashash is most Rashi is most What? The Rashash. Yeah. The Shmosh Dashan. Yes. And if you look in the, at the end of Baba Basra, you have the Hagois from Ramat Asyol Shtashon, who uh, inherited the library of the Rashash, and he maintained the Shtashon library. And I don't believe he ever got married, and his library, al Acher Misasai, was uh, many people who borrowed sperm from the Ramat Asyol Shtashon's library for whatever reason, never return them. <laughs> okay, so we have, on the one hand, the Taz, 
And we have the Marsha who said you can't give the compliment. You have the Rashash who said yes. And then says Rabbi Vadi Yosef, this is in the Yabi Oimer, Chelek Beis, Yaradea Simen Tezayin. And the says Rabbi Vadi Yosef, an unbelievable diak in the Gemara. But Rabbi Vadi Yosef wants to be medayik from this Gemara that it's permitted to say this is a beautiful teaching, it's only you can't say and this teaching is not beautiful. Why? You take a look in number 7 in Aleph. He quotes the Gemara in Ervin. And if you look in Rashi and Ervin, we have it on our sheets right after number 3. Someone who says, Zu Noah, Vizu Eino Noah. Rashi stresses that the Isser is only saying, Zu Noah, Vizu Eino Noah. Says Rav Avad, Yav, Zu Noah, Bavad, Shaper, Dami. But if you want to say, this statement is beautiful alone, you could. Misham Hachi, listen to this diak. This is a great diak. When Rav Nachman heard the first teaching about Erov, and he said, Kama ma'al yahashmaitza. How beautiful it is. Did Rabbi Yehuda say back to Rav Nachman, how could you say this? No. no. The Gemara did not challenge the compliment of Rav Nachman. It's only after Rav Nachman made the second statement, and this Gemara is not nice, only then the Gemara challenges it. According to the Marsha, and according to the Taz, if you can't even say, Kama ma'al yahashmaita, then immediately when Rav Nachman said, Kama ma'al yahashmaita, we should have asked on him, how are you allowed to say, Kama ma'al yahashmaita, but you're not a compliment, because that's mashma, this is nice, and that's not nice. From the fact that the Gemara waited until Rav Nachman criticized a different Gemara, that implies what? It's not the compliment that's problematic, it's the criticism that's problematic. Says Rabbi Vadya, from the fact that the Gemara waited to challenge Rav Nachman's statement until he criticized, that implies what? There is no problem saying, Kama ma'alya hai shmaita. That's, wow. that's a pretty interesting <laughs> deal. So here on one hand you have the Marsha, and you have the Taz. I mean the Taz was, you know the Pnei Yeshua said about the Taz, the Taz was the greatest of all the Achreinim. You know, the, somebody of Nefesh Chaim writes about the Taz. A woman once came to the Taz and said, My son, my son, he's dying. The Taz says, what do you want from my life? I'm not a, a miracle worker. So the woman says, this is printed in Ruach Chaim, Parak Aleph, Mishnah Aleph. The woman says, I'm coming to your Taira. Taz says, you came to the right place. The Taz says, I will donate the Taira that I'm learning with my Talmidim right now. And the child had a miraculous recovery. He was revived. He came back to life. The story goes that um, the city of the Taz during the times of a pogrom, were surrounded, and the city was fasting, and the Taz was davening for the Yomud, and the Taz was so famished, as he's the Chazan, he faints, and he saw in a dream, the Pasuk, V'ganoisi al-o'ir bav were David avdi. I'm going to protect the whole city in the merit of David, the Taz was a David, and he wakes up, they're mechazik themselves in tefillah, and miraculously the city was saved. Taz. So you have the Taz, and you have the Marsha, on one hand. On the other hand, you have the Rashash, and you have Rabbi Vadi Yosef's diok in the Gemara. So who are we passing like? <laughs> <laughs> Says Rabbi Vadya that I also found another support that it is permitted to give a compliment. And that is, you look in Ois Dalid, look in Ois Dalid, about uh, ten lines down, another of the great uh, Sephardic Gedolim, Umatsasi Lahagoin Marenu Rav Chaim Falaji. Chaim Falaji writes in the Sefer Enik Kochai, and he says, he brings down an opinion, Zu Noah Belvad is Asr. You can't even say this is a nice Gemara. Says of Chaim Falaji, he disagrees that it's only Asr if you say Zu Noah, Vizu Eino Noah. And he writes this diuk from Rashi, that Rashi also implies zu, it's only Zuna, the Zu Eino Noah. And he brings the many Gemaras and Shas that's, that Amoram said, Kama Ma'alya Ha Shmaita. So basically, to summarize, the Taz and the Marsha say, don't say Kama Ma'alya Ha Shmaita. The Rashash, Rabbi Vadya's diuk in the Gemara, Rabbi Chaim Falaji, they say it is permitted. Says Rabbi Vadya, we're going to side with the Rashash and Rabbi Chaim Falaji 
that it's permitted to say, Kama ma'al ya hashmaita. You're allowed to say this is a gushma gemara. This is a good shear. Right? See, I'm fishing for a... <laughs> but so yeah, the says Rav Avadya, we, we pask in like all these good rayas and gemara that you're allowed to say, Kama ma'al ya hashmaita. Says Rav Avadya, but I'm going to tell you another chiddush. And the chiddush is like this. Even according to the Marsha and the Taz, who the Marsha and the Taz say, you're not a say, you're not a comment, this was a good shear, this was a good sugya. That's if you're say, saying it matter of fact. You finish the shear and you say, you know, I think that this Gemara was a good Gemara. I think that this shear, that in my opinion, this shear was a good shear. But what if you're not saying it as like a, an intellectual assessment. What if you're saying it, B'derech Hespailas? You just heard a good shir, and you say, Oh, Kashmak Kashir, that was a Kashmak Kashir. You don't mean to say, Yeah, that, you know, last, like, 930 was a disaster. <laughs> you just, you know, in the moment, you just happen to say, you know, you had the feel, and you're commenting out of, you're moved by something at the moment, in the heat of the moment. So you're not trying, you're not contrasting. You're saying it, B'derech Hespailas. This was Kashmak, as opposed to nothing. Right? Let's say, you know, your wife made a dinner. So it depends how you say it. You say, you know, in my opinion, tonight's chicken was good. So you say, well, well, what about, you know, last night? Last night you, 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 when you, if you say it, like, with such as a dayan, that your, your <laughs> assessment, it was good, that implies other things. But what if, you know, hmm, wow, that, this is delicious. You don't mean as opposed to anything else. Just it's, you're enjoying it in the moment so much, so you give it a compliment, but you're not trying to contrast it to something else. So the problem is to say, this is a good statement. You know, it depends how you're saying it. If you're saying it matter of fact, you're saying it as like an assessment, that may have implications, which according to the Marsha and the Tazi can't do. But if you're saying it, so then you don't mean in, as opposed to anything. Just when people have ways of uh, complimenting and saying things, somebody may mean it much more uh, saying it that way than somebody who's overwhelmed. Effusive, right? Mm. Right, so you're correct. You've got to know who, who's, and how he's giving it. Yeah, you have to know who's giving it. You have to, it depends on the personality of the person giving it. It depends on the, who you're saying it to. It depends on the circumstance. Yes. So, so the value is saying this whole machlekes is really academic if it's said in a very... Uh, specific, judgmental way. But if it's merely just a regular derech um, espailos, that even, even the uh, Marsha and the Taz would agree to. And one final point that Rabbi Vadya says, a very interesting point. The Gemara in Ervin that says, you're not allowed to say kama ma'al yehoshmaita. Is it a halacha? Is it a halacha? Did the Gemara say, Asr loimar kama ma'al yehoshmaita. The Gemara just says, you know, it's, a, it's not a good minhag to do that. It's not minhag chasidus. Says Ravad, I have a question for you. Open up your Rambams. Flip through the Rambam. Does it say anywhere in the Rambam that you're now to say, Kama ma'al ya hashmaitza, v'loi ma'al ya hashmaitza? Is it brought down in the Rambam anywhere? No. How about in Shulchanach? Does the Shulchanach or the Tor bring this down to the Why not? Why does the Rambam not bring down that you're now to say, this Gemara is nice, that Gemara is not nice? The answer is, because it's not a halacha brura. It's just minak chasidus. It's just, you know, a pious practice. And that's why the Rush and the Rif, they'll bring it down, because the Rush and the Rif will bring down whatever you need to know. But the Rambam and the Shulchanach only bring down what's absolute halacha. So therefore, even according to the Marsha, even to say, you know, this was a good shear, even if it implies that the last year was a disaster. It's not us, sir. It's just not meaning chasidus. So look in Zion. Uva'etzim adavar. Back to the root of the matter. Nur l'ani daiti. She'en o isr gomer mamish. Even if you want to say like the marshal and you want to say like the taz, it's not an absolute isr. Rak midas darecheretz. It's only... Proper etiquette, uminog yafesh alalas is kain, and a nice practice not to do this. Behind the time of the Rama, the Torah Shulchan Aruch, the there was a mehalacha. That's why the Rama and the Torah omit this halacha. Afal pisha riff for harosh, he view as hagemar halazu, even though the riff and the rush bring it down. Like the Shas Tshuvas Pnei Maven brings down, 
that uh, the Rambam and the Torah also leave out another halacha that don't sleep in the same room where, where there's a husband and wife. Why don't they bring it down the halacha? Because it's not an Isser Gomer, it's just not nice. Right? And that's why this is a very interesting Yisoyed, Rabbi said, an important Yisoyed to know. That you may say, oh, uh, we don't hold like it because it's on the Rambam. No, the Rambam is bringing down absolute halacha. He's not bringing down good practice. For example, the Gemara in Bracho says, Kal HaKoyre li Avraham, Avraham over Be'ase. That anyone who calls Avraham, Avraham, he violates an Ase. Oh, but why doesn't the Rambam bring it down? The answer is because the Gemara is just figuratively speaking. It's not Mamash and Ase. It's just not nice to call him Avraham. So if it's just not nice, the Rambam doesn't bring it down. Or the Isra of counting Jews. Why doesn't the Rambam bring it down? Not because it's the best thing in the world to do, because it's not Mamash Asr. So just to summarize Rabbi Isai, to say this Gemara was nice, but this Gemara is not nice, the Gemara in Erevin says you shouldn't do. What about to say this Gemara was nice, the Taz and the Marsha say, don't do it. The Rashash says, we have many Gemaras in Shas. Rashash says you could do it. The Rav Chaim Falaji says you could do it. Rav Avadya is Medayik from the Gemara in Erevin, you could do it. So Rav Avadya sides with that approach. But then Rav Avadya adds another svar that if you don't merely, if you're not trying to give, you know, a specific, if you're not hired, right, if you're coming in on behalf of the government and they ask you to rank, to rate the Gemara because, you know, they're giving a certain amount of funding. So if you write, this is nice, that implies something is not nice. But if you're just saying it in a, you know, in the spur of the moment, you're over, you're, you're inspired by something, you say, oh, it was very good, it was very enjoyable, and that kind of thing, Rav Avadya says it's permitted. And even according to those who say it's Asr, it's not Mamish Asr. It's only Amida Taiva not to do it. It's only Minik Hasidus. Okay. As for a few moments, I want to go back to what the Taz said. The Taz understands that when Rashi says, Parsha Zu Yafanid Rashas, what Rashi means is, normally you have Pshat and you have Drush. But in this case, where there's no Pshat, the Drush becomes a Pshat. I want to just show you one other instance that I'm familiar with where there is no pshat and there's a drush and because there is no pshat, the drush becomes the pshat. You have this in the Shah of Chumas Radvaz. The Radvaz asks the following question. Radvaz wants to know, of all the Yisurim in the Torah, the most chamor of all the Yisurim is chametz and Pesach. You need to search for it. You need to burn it. You need to be mavatal it. You need to search in the chayrin and the stakin. You need to iser bal yira, iser bal yimatzah. You have actually seven chumras by chametz. You don't have by anything else. You don't have by avodah zara. So the Radvan says, why is it? If it's because there's a chiyav kares, chelav and dam is a chiyav kares, and we don't find you have to search your house for chelav, right? Do we say you know? The day after you buy meat in the store, you have to go searching your crevices. Maybe some chalav dripped out of the... No. Elamai, because chametz is asr bahana. Klei ha-kerem is asr bahana. And we don't have these chachamras. If it's because the whole year you're used to eating it, so we're afraid you may eat it on Pesach. So, a nazir who has wine, we should require a nazir to do bedikas yayin in his house. Because the whole year he's used to drinking wine. So Advan says, ultimately he throws up his arms. He throws up his, his hands. He says, there's no pshat over here. There's no pshat of chametz. You look five lines from the end. Therefore I rely on that which chazal say in the medrash. Chametz of Pesach is a remez to the Yitzhahara. And chametz is the yeast in the dough. And the worst thing in the world, what's the most poisonous thing in the world? More than Chazer, more than Chelev, more than Sharon Nisko, more than Abu Dazara, is the Yitzhahara. So since the Yitzhahara is so bad, you've got to search for it, you've got to burn it, you've got to destroy it, you've got to search in the cracks and the crevices, Vayera Vayima. So basically, what is the Radvaz doing? He's looking for Pshat. He has no Pshat. So what does he say the Pshat is? Drush. Comments the Chida in his Haggadah. Very interesting comment. He says, Look straight, he says. This Rav, the Radva, has searched. He has not found any reason for the Chumras of Chumras. He can't find the Pshat. He has to rely on the Remez. He says... 
כי החומץ רמז ליה צהרה, כמבור היית בדבר. נמצא שהרמז of חומץ הוא הפשט. It comes out that the remez is upgraded to pshat. In other words, sometimes there is no pshat. You say, but what's the pasha pshat? There are instances where let's say, vayikach karach. What's the pshat in vayikach karach? There is no pshat in vayikach karach. So in that case, the drush then gets, is elevated, gets an upgrade. It's no longer just drush. It becomes a pshat. You want to know, why is chamet so chamar? So the Ravah says, I have no pshat. I only have remez, so now the remez is upgraded to pshat. So while, while we're on the topic of pshat and remez and drush and side, we'll just end with the following. We know there are different uh, levels of Torah. We know Torah is compared to mayim, and Torah is compared to mayim, to yayim, right? Torah is, is compared to water, right? It's it's it satiates. It's um, the Torah says. Uh, Torah is compared to water, but Torah is also compared to wine. What does this mean? Says the Chida. There are different parts of Torah. The Pshat of Torah is Nimshulo Lamayim. The Soid of Torah is Nimshulo Layayin. That's why Yayin is the Gematria Soid. So some people they say I'm a Pashat Yid. I only believe in Pshat. Pshat. So, says the Chida, those who only believe in Pshat, we unscramble the le- letters of Pshat, and it spells Tipish. Someone who only believes in Pshat, so we unscramble the levels. What about someone who doesn't believe in the Soid, in the secrets? They only believe in the Pshat, the Remez, and the Drush. Pei, Reish, Dalad. Spells what? Third. <laughs> says the Chida, Without the Samach, the Samach is very important. The final Samach spells out Pardes. But when you take out the Samach, you have, so then it's Kesus Kifered, Ein Haven. So, whatever levels of Torah we're learning, whether we're learning Pshat, we're learning Remez, we're learning Drush, we're learning Said, we have to be aware that they're all important. And we learn today an instance where not everything that's Pshat is Pshat. Sometimes... The remez could be pshat, like by chametz, like the rabbis. Sometimes the drush could be pshat, like Rashi in the beginning of this week's parsha. Abayisat, have a wonderful day. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.